Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make this awesome rustic pallet wood table, but I think I can do better than that. So let's go ahead and make it and turn it into something like this. That better? Want to see how I did it? Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome and we're going to start this project off with a simple piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood ripped down into three inch strips and then cut to length here at the crosscut sled. These pieces are going to be used to make these sawhorses that are going to become the base for this mobile pallet wood table. As you can see here, I'm using glue and brads to assemble it. I make one, I make another, and now I have them clamped together in place on my workbench to go ahead and install a piano hinge. Using a self-centering drill bit makes quick work of this. I come back again and I install these screws and that is one of these sawhorses complete. Well, not quite. I gotta have something that's gonna actually make these stay put when they're extended. So I'm gonna use some of this rustic kind of rope twine stuff and I'm gonna drill a hole right in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and separate these two legs by about 14 or 15 inches. And to make reference for the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my workbench where these clamps were in place. And now it's time to install the rope. Simply tie a knot in one end, feed it through both holes, extend it all the way, make a mark. Then collapse them down and then tie that knot where that mark was left and then both of these sawhorses that I'm gonna make are gonna be extended exactly the same distance. As you can see here, I'm starting to rip down these pallets and let me bring you in here to kind of give you an idea of what the best way I found to break these down is. So pallet wood project time. I'm gonna show you the simplest way that I found to take apart a pallet and here's how it goes. You simply attach it to a work surface, take a circular saw and rip down each side. As you can see, these pieces are loose and once you get to this stage, this is pretty easy pry bar optional, right? At least I hope it goes that way. You take this piece and you twist it underneath the ones in front of it. And when you get to this stage here, guess what? It pops right out. That my friends is the easiest way that I found to take apart these monsters. With the pieces then disassembled, I have some nails to contend with. I'm gonna trim these off with an angle grinder because I want the other side to actually keep some of the nail heads in to keep with that rustic look. I'm then gonna clean up each edge and then cut these down to a certain size, which is gonna give me a kind of a chaotic brick-like hardwood floor-like pattern. As you can see here, this is a half inch piece of Baltic birch, which is gonna be the substrate for this. I like the pattern so far, so let's go ahead and nail it down with some glue and brads. So the pattern I'm choosing after I install these long pieces leaves me a section where I need to actually cut some smaller pieces. So we're gonna do that right here. I'm gonna then come back with glue and brads again, and it's gonna fill those holes in very nicely. As you can see, some need a little more persuading than others. At this time, everything is good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the edge with a circular saw. I make a mark on the other side and I do the same thing right here as well. I flip the piece over and I drag my circular saw along the edge of the plywood, giving me a nice clean cut, which is gonna then allow me to reference it up against the table saw fence to trim up the other side. I sand the piece down from 100 to 180 grit, and then I wrap the entire piece in a layer of Tyvek house wrap, as you can see here. I'm gonna then mix a two-part epoxy, a two-to-one mixture here from Total Boat. This stuff dries extremely hard and it's extremely clear, but I'm not using it for the aesthetic choice. I'm using it more to stabilize this entire piece. I then flood the surface and I squeegee every nook and cranny full of epoxy I could find. I wait overnight, I come back the next day and I take apart this thing and I find that it is glass hard. This is actually pretty neat. However, I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down because I don't want necessarily this really high gloss finish. Like I said before, I do want it to be stabilized and this epoxy did a very good job of this. With everything sanded and the edges hand chamfered a little bit, I go ahead and put this thing on my shop made Lazy Susan. Yes, it looks small, but however, it could take quite a bit. But here's the thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put a natural stain on the edges of this piece to kind of darken up and richen up the wood, bringing out some of the colors of this pallet wood. Then I'm gonna apply a top coat of Halcyon Clear Marine Varnish, again from Total Boat. This stuff you apply once, wait an hour, apply again. You can do that three times. Come back, sand it to 320, and you're good to go. This dries rock hard and it's very durable. So as I'm putting the final coat on, as you can see here, I'm spinning it around. It looks like it has a very high gloss finish, but this will dry to a satin or more of a semi-gloss as well. 
Hey guys, before we wrap this up, I want to say thank you to you all for joining me for this project. And also, I would like to invite you to follow me on Instagram. We have an awesome time on that platform. Down below is going to be a link to it. Definitely follow me on there for some behind the scenes footage and some interaction. Great conversations happen on that platform. So if you're not already following me down there, the first line down below in the description is going to be that. So please do so. And I look forward to talking to you on there as well. So as I put a coat of clear on these saw horses, I decided to do this with them on top of a pallet because they're going to have a pallet on top of them for the rest of their existence. I figured why not let them have their day in the sun. I then sand the back of this piece to 180 and I soften all the edges and now it's time to put my brand or my stamp of approval on this piece. Now the beauty of this table is that the entire build is collapsible. As you can see here, you fold the saw horses in, you wrap the rope around the base once and then tie it off and now you can take it wherever you'd like. Well, here's the table, guys, in its final form. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Looks great, very functional, and I hope my client gets a lot of use out of it. Hey, guys, thank you so much for being here for this one. This was an absolute blast to build. It's always fun. Every once in a while, I'll take trash and turn it into treasure, and definitely pallets are a great way to do that. And, guys, I have a favor to ask of you as well. YouTube is an interesting enigma sometimes. You don't understand exactly how videos get picked up in the so-called algorithm, right? But I wanna try something. I wanna see if I can get as many people to like this video, share this video, and comment on it. Even if you've only been here for a day or two, or if you've been a glimpse inside Faithful for a long time, and you've done that in the past, thank you so much. I am eager to see this channel start to take off, and I really wanna get out here and do this full time. Okay, I can't believe I've said that. I've had a career for the last 20 years and I plan on working there for another 20 or maybe more, uh, but it depends on this. So guys, I have a favor to ask of you if you wanna get me motivated to get out here as much as possible. Like, comment, share on this video and I greatly appreciate it. I'm always gonna invite you to subscribe over here and I got a couple more videos playing over there as well for you to check out. Again, my name is Chris, this has been A Glimpse Inside and I definitely appreciate you being here and I'll see you on that next project. Mm -hmm.